Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and this is Do-It-Yourself Folding Ground Plane version 2.0. And before I show you the antenna, I just wanted to go over the particulars of it. Uh, it's VHF UHF. It's 11 ounces in weight. It's very inexpensive to construct yourself. It's simple to construct yourself. It provides a dipole gain, and it includes a 19-foot long cable of RG58 and after the loss in the cable at VHF which is minus 1.2 dB we end up with the system gain with the antenna of 0.95 dBi and if you look to the right here we've got an example of just the way it's installed here and you can see the antenna is, is set up like almost three times the height of our individual operator standing there and you can use any natural or man-made object to secure this antenna within the length of the feeder. And if you look at the bottom and running the numbers, you can see the differences in performance by elevating the antenna, even factoring in the cable losses. And you can see our first is just essentially like a quarter wave antenna on a vehicle. We're going to say it's plus 2.15 dBi, 5 watts of VHF. And our target station is 9 meters of antenna height at the uh, same dipole type gain and they have an effective path reliability of 77 percent at 15 kilometers and if we look at elevating our antenna up with this simple antenna here even factoring in the cable losses with our receiving station or target station being exactly the same parameters we end up extending our range by eight kilometers so in having the same path reliability of 77 percent. All right now this is based upon a suburban model of the talk path and it's a theoretical model. Okay this is my version 1.0 folding ground plane and there's a video on this and go please go in the description box if you feel so inclined to check it out. But uh, we built this right here. It's a very simple uh, design. It's using a basic hookup wire and we're using HT antennas right here for our uh, resonator. And we're using a SMA pass-through. And our RF cable is 15 feet of RG223 with SMA connectors. And I ride a adapter on either end of it so I could use a a radio that has a, a male SMA on the inside of it as well as a one with a female SMA and then also if I want to hook it to something with a BNC connector on it. And here is version 2.0 and of course this is configured for transport right now but what I've used for a radiator is one of these simple telescoping antennas right here which actually work pretty good. Uh, it's also got more power handling capability. Uh, I've run 50 watts of RF through it and had no problems whatsoever. So when you collapse it all the way down, you've got your UHF right here, and then you extend it all the way and retract this much all the way back to there, and then bring it down a quarter inch, and it's a perfect match at 146 megahertz. So it allows you the capability of once you learn what length you need to have the antenna set for, you can pre-mark it with a silver sharpie and actually know ahead of time and actually tune this antenna for operation outside of the amateur band if needed. So there's that and then we look at the antenna itself here and what we've used is, is just a piece of aluminum. This is an aluminum fender washer. And I use 632nd hardware. And you can see right here that the RF adapter that I used wasn't an adapter at all, but it was just an RF connector that's a, a bulkhead feed-through for RG58. And I permanently attach that and then just have a BNC connector at the opposite end right here. Now, this is set up for a mobile radio and as such that's why I have the BNC on it rather than the SMA which you could certainly use an adapter or I have little short cables that I use that I put on a portable 
to make it more flexible. But what I use for my counterpoise wires is this WD-1A. And since it's a paired line, what I did was I just cut one counterpoise wire for UHF and the other one for VHF. But you can see it's very easy to set up and I don't have that the contraption that I had at the bottom with the uh, the uh, fiber rod spreaders and uh, silicone tubing to keep the spreaders equidistant from each other or the uh, counterpoise wires because I found that I didn't really see a tremendous amount of differences. Now we're going to start with your choice of coax. Uh, this is a 20 foot section of Belden 8219 which is uh, a 95 percent shield braid stranded conductor coax cable you know this is very portable it's very easy to put on or about your person to put into a pack to set up a field expedient antenna or to put up a commercial antenna in an austere environment and for this that reason is why I will choose for this cable to use BNC not only because I can minimize my adapters that I'm going to need to use to interconnect this to different radios but I can also have multifunctionality incorporated into my feed line. So now you can see our feed lines done here and what I can do is is I can actually just take this if I had to couple it with another BNC feed line for some reason or the other I could just do so without have to, having to use an adapter and let's say that uh, I needed to tie it into existing infrastructure that had half inch hard line with type N connectors on it. I just take this right here and I plug that in there like that and I'm good to go. Okay, for our counterpoise wires, we're going to use good old WD1A, which is just military field phone wire. Uh, this is, it's a stainless steel, two stainless steel conductors that have a little bit of copper around the outside of it. So it's got some rigidity compared to the standard hookup wire. Going to go ahead and measure it out. We're going to go 19 inches. Cut it. Strip it away. Just like that. Twist it together. And then we're going to terminate it in one of these connectors here. And then we're going to stake it. six and a quarter inches to our ring terminal here and then take a very sharp pair of cutters and transect that wire and then take your razor blade and peel this back here and just remove that all the way off of here. So basically what you do is, is you have your UHF and your VHF counterpoise coexisting in the same wire. Our radial support plate we're going to use for this project is just a thick fender washer that's 3 8 diameter hole in it and it's already got one hole here for a 6 32nd screw. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, is we're going to punch three more holes in it BNC RF connector on here. I have a small plate for my radials right here. So now I have my radial plate on and what I can do is, is I can just go ahead and attach my counterpoise wires. Now you can see we've got it attached and Take your telescoping resonator, tighten it on there, and we're ready to take it out and test it. Okay, here's our antenna.
Okay, let's see how this sucker handles 50 watts of RF VHF. Uh, we got about, what, 47 watts forward. And that line's barely moving there, so we're talking maybe a half a watt reflected. Okay, let's try it on UHF here. Okay. Radio's doing, what, about 29, 28, 29, forward. Yeah, nothing reflected. If you wanted to go ahead and hang this antenna here, you just do it just like we would for uh, hoisting that antenna. You just make a loop that would go around your feed line here, which I just use a simple bowl and knot, right here like that, and then just drop yourself a half hitch around the base of it and it'll come up a little bit and there you have it and you can go ahead and hang your antenna well there you have it the ground plane version 2 I hope this helps this is Brett from Survival Comps till next time